Do you need to quickly learn Power BI in just 15 minutes? Wow! Watch this video. Shabis here and today you will learn how to create a Power BI report in just 15 minutes. That's incredible! If it's the first time you're watching my videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get a notification for the new upcoming videos. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and read Power BI articles on my blog. Stay tuned! You may work in an organization with huge amount of data and you need quickly make a decision for the business. This video is exactly designed for you. You can use Power BI to achieve your goals. Don't miss any steps of this short video and watch it again to easily create your reports. The first step for someone new is how to install Power BI on your computer. Easily open your Microsoft Store and search for Power BI Desktop. Just complete the simple installation process and when finished, open the application. When you open Power BI, you can see the screen pop-up window. Here there are several options available for you like getting data from here, opening the recent resources, files and some other options that we don't really need them at this stage. So close this pop-up window. The first page you can see here is the report view and you can see the canvas that you will build your visuals on it. If I hover my mouse here on the left, you can see it shows that we are on the report view. To proceed, we need first import some data into Power BI. You can see in the middle there are some icons that help you to get data. Or easily from the home tab, you can see the data section that helps you to get data from any of these sources like Excel files, SQL Server and so on. And if you couldn't see your data source here, easily click on get data and here you can search for a variety of sources of data. For this video, I just have an Excel sheet here as the source of my data and I want to import its data into Power BI. So easily just from get data, I choose Excel workbook and then I'll go to the destination folder and choose the file. Then Power BI opens up this navigator window for me. Here I can see the list of tables in my Excel file. If I click on each of them, here on the right you can see a preview of that table. Then to get the data, I simply choose the tables I need by clicking on the checkbox beside them here. When we select the desired tables, we can see these two buttons below here become activated for us and we can choose them. If I press on load button, the tables will be directly loaded to the dataset. We use this approach when we are sure that the data is clean and don't need any transformation. So the data will be loaded as it is. Otherwise, we need to click on the transform data and edit our data. It's usually better to press on transform data to become sure that the data is in an appropriate format. When I click on transform data, a new window will open up for us, which we call it as Power Query Editor window. To simply show you how this window works, on the left hand side, you can see the list of tables in your report. And if I click on each of them, you can see the table view here. Then. You see the columns and their formats and if you need to change them, you can easily click here and change. If you need to add a column, you can easily go to add column tab and add the required columns. For example here, I choose fact sales table and press on conditional column. And then choose the unit price column and when it's less than or equal to $500, we receive low. Then press on add clause. And then the same, when the unit price is less than or equal to $1,000, we receive medium. And in the L section, I write high. And here choose price level as the name of the column and press on OK. Here is the way we easily created the column based on our data. 
There are a variety of options also available in the Transform tab that helps you to change and clean your data. Easy PC. Consider that we applied all our changes and then from the Home tab, press on Close and Apply. Just after a short time, the formatted table will be loaded into our dataset. Great! Now we are back to the initial report view. On the right hand side, you can see the data feed. Here is where you can see all the tables and data we imported into our report. If I press on the little chevron beside each table, I can expand the table and see all the columns or fields in it. Now it's the time to click on the second item on the left, the data view. If I press on it, it shows us a view of our table and we can easily see what data we have. I can easily click on another table and change the view to the other tables. If in this stage you see any of the data should be changed, you can still apply the transformation. Don't worry. You can easily go to the Home tab and choose Transform Data and the Power Query Editor window will appear again for you and you can edit your data. For example, here I like to change the values in gender column from Dim customers. Actually, I want to change M to male and F to female. So easily I click on this column and here click on replace values and enter the values and change them in the table. Or for example, this column is extra and we don't need it. I easily click on it and here click on remove columns. Banana, just close and apply again. The third option here on left is model view. Here you can see the data model and how the tables join to each other. When you load the data, Power BI tries to find the similar fields in different tables and connect them automatically to each other. To see the relationship between different tables, you can easily click on it. And here on Properties pane, it shows the columns used for the relationship between those two tables. If the join is correct, that's fine. But if not, you can easily right click on the join and delete it. Then to join the desired columns, you can easily drag the selected field from one table and drop it onto the other column in the other table. Just become sure that all tables are joining and relating to each other correctly based on their primary and foreign keys. It's good to know the most appropriate model to create in Power BI is star schema, which is pretty similar to a star, a fact in the middle and some things on sides. If you are using Snowflake model, I recommend you to apply some changes to change E to a star schema for better performance. When dataset modeling finish, it's time to create a report. Let's go back to the report view. Each report can contain one or more pages. Here below the canvas, you can add as many pages as you like to the report. On each page, you can create a variety of visuals. In other words, our reports are consisting of different visuals and elements we are creating on different pages. Over here on the visualization pane, you can see all common visual types that you can use in your reports. If you need some specific visuals and it's not available here, don't worry. You can easily click on these three dots and go to Power BI Store and find the proper visual for your report. But I'm pretty sure that most of the time you don't need to import any other visuals apart from this list. And this list of visuals are the most common ones that are being used in different organizations. To use each of these visualizations, you should simply click on it and it will appear for you on canvas. Then you can easily drag and drop the fields you like into the visuals fields. For example, in this case, I choose a line graph and I drag the date column from our dim date into the x-axis field. Here I can see a hierarchy. I just want to see the year and month, so I remove easily quarter and day. Then if I expand the fact sales, I can easily drag any of these columns into y-axis to have a graph. This field with a sigma icon contains numerical values that you can apply some calculations on them. The other are text value columns or you can have other types as well. For example, if I want to see the number of customers on a timeline, I need to drag customer key into y-axis. 
when I drop this customer key into Y axis, Power BI applies an aggregation on it. Here you can see Power BI is counting the customer keys, but easily you can click on this chevron and change it to any other types of aggregations. Okay, let's have a look at our graph. First of all, you can easily drag each corner of this graph to increase or decrease the size, or you can place it wherever you like. As you remember, we imported a hierarchy of year and months into X axis. Initially, you can see the year on graph, but if you click on this small gear on top right, you can easily drill down to the next level. That's amazing! When the visual is selected, you can see this icon on the visualization pane, format your visual. If I click on it, it provides me a variety of options to edit and format the visual, like changing the sizes, fonts, colors, titles, and almost everything you can see on this graph. All the visuals have this formatting option. They are pretty similar, but with some minor differences due to the nature of the specific visuals. I leave it with you to play and format the visuals based on your requirements. I just resize this graph and move it here. You can see a bunch of different visuals here to choose and use. Line graphs are appropriate when you usually work with timelines and need to present values in different dates. Bar and column graphs are usually being used when you need to show values by categories. For example here, I create a column graph and drag the product category field into the X axis and then sales amount into the Y axis. So easy! We can use cards to show the KPIs, for example, I choose it and drag the sales amount into it. Another important visual that we usually use is a slicer. A slicer works like a filter on our reports. When we drag a field into it, your users can filter the report based on their selections. For example, I choose a slicer visual and drag the product category into it. You can see now we have the ability to select each of these categories and consequently the values on all visuals are changing for the specific categories. Slicers have different types and you can edit them easily. And if you are interested to know more, you can watch this video on my channel about slicers. Let me show you another interesting interaction between the visuals. Here on this column graph, we have these different product categories. If I click on each of these columns, you can see the other visuals also change and show the value only for the specific category. That's fantastic! There are too many visuals available for you in Power BI to choose and use, and I just presented some of them for you. You can also add some other features to your reports from the Insert tab, like shapes, buttons, and text, easily by choosing each of these elements. Okay, consider we created this report and now it's the time to publish it to use by our users. Just before publishing, I changed the name of this page to report 1. As I told, you can create some other page and add more visuals and create a more comprehensive report. To publish from the Home tab, click on the Publish button on the top right. You can see first Power BI add to save the changes and when it's saved, we can proceed this stage. After saving, this window will appear for you and you can easily choose a workspace and then click on select. And then after some seconds, you can see it published successfully. Then you can easily open your browser, type powerbi.com and if you need to enter your credentials, do it. Or if you previously entered, you will see this page. You can easily see your workspaces here and choose the workspace you publish the report into it. Here you can see the name of your report and if I click on it, you can see the report. Fantastic! On top left of this report, if I click on File, you can see the options to embed the report on SharePoint or website or wherever you like. Or you can generate the QR code and your users can be navigated to the report by scanning it. Next, we have export option to analyze the data in Excel or you can take a screenshot of report and open it in PowerPoint or PDF. Here we have also the share option. We can share it to whoever we like and we can insert their email and a message and they will receive the link for this report. Or you can copy the link and share it to your users. 
there are a couple of other options also available for you. You can also easily share it to Microsoft Teams chat. Great! This was a quick tutorial on how to create Power BI reports in just 15 minutes. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Also, if you are interested to learn more about Power BI, you can subscribe to the channel and watch many videos to learn lots of tips and tricks about Power BI. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and read Power BI articles on my blog. Have a good day, all Power BI!